There's an English guy online who eats food for a living and he just got his one billionth view on YouTube and his name is Beard Meets Food. Now the crazy thing with this is he's in pretty good shape. And if you don't know who this guy is, this is what he does. Look at this guy. Look at the size of those cheese curds. Sick. So if you're like me, you're probably wondering, how does this guy travel the world eating the most calorie dense meals ever seen in history? He's averaging millions of views per video. Let's be conservative, five to 10,000 US dollars per million views. Imagine that as a life. Traveling around the country, what do you do? I'm a professional eater. And remain in shape. Guy shredded. What is his secret? But just before we get into the secrets that Adam utilizes to stay in shape whilst being a professional eater, Someone commented something on my channel the other day saying that you need to control insulin, not your calories, which is completely against everything that I believe in. And he said you couldn't lose fat if you were eating McDonald's three times a day. There's a common misconception that you can't lose weight unless you eat healthy foods. And although I want people to eat healthy foods, we're gonna go to McDonald's and I'm gonna show you what a day's worth of calories for me would look like in a deficit. Now, some people refute this, but you had that famous professor that lost weight eating Twinkies. We've had Jordan Syatt recently on YouTube lose fat while spiking his insulin every day. Although I'm not here saying that eating junk food or takeaway food is good for fat loss, I think it's a good idea to visualize what that amount of calories would look like in something like McDonald's. Can I please get one Big Mac? Uh, 20 chicken nuggets, please. 20, please. Large chips, please. Two cheeseburgers, please. And an orange juice, please. That's it, thanks. I'm not saying that other people don't do this, but I have to, I have to say please and thanks after every order. Similarly, so when I use ChatGPT, I say please and thanks on there too, because you best be polite to them robots, because when they come after us and start taking our job, I have a feeling that AI is gonna remember everyone that used please and thank you in their prompts and everyone that didn't. And I'm just saying, should that day come, I wanna be on the side of the robots. The thing is, you could eat McDonald's all day every day and still lose fat. Orange juice, cheeseburger one, cheeseburger two. Large fries. Big Mac. Twenty chicken nuggets, just shy of two and a half thousand calories. Oh, it's not exactly fast food, is it? Oh, I'm sure. Oi, oi, Savaloi. Cheers, thank you. Oh, fuck yeah. Now the problem with consuming this for fat loss is one, I wouldn't feel that good. Two, I could smash this in one meal, pretty easy. I'd be a bit uncomfortable afterwards, but if I was to make two and a half thousand calories of meats, vegetables fruits. Suddenly the food volume would get to the point that it'd be incredibly difficult to finish in one meal, maybe even two meals. And also it's important to realize there's not a huge deal of nutrition in here. So for the amount of calories I'm getting for the amount of nutrition, it's not the best deal. Our body always has ongoing processes, whether it's muscle repair, skin regeneration, nail growth, all of these little things. And we have the opportunity to provide those things for our body with what we eat and what we drink. And picking this as a method isn't going to support that too well. It's like having a plant that you really want to grow well and putting it in the shade and not watering it enough. But one thing I can't stress enough is, occasionally, binging on these foods can be completely fine as long as you balance the books after. But there's not just the calories that really mess with our head. The day after we binge, we feel inclined to step on the scales. And we think that all that weight we've gained is fat. But what we don't think about a lot is, if we've just binged, we put a lot of food inside us. If this bin bag was to represent my stomach after binging on a big McDonald's, Sometimes we can fail to realize the actual weight it is of what we've eaten. Not to mention, if that food is incredibly salty, there's a chance you're gonna retain a lot of water on top of that. Not all of that weight you gain is fat, and not all of it will be turned to fat either. Even when you're weighing yourself in the morning, if you use your iPhone to take a picture of it, you're 0.2 kilograms heavier because of how much an iPhone weighs. And although this weighs quite a bit of weight, because it's McDonald's, that's only a day's worth of calories. Never mind quality of food. As far as food volume, that just isn't gonna be good to partner with when it comes to dieting for long periods of time. 
So you can lose fat eating McDonald's, although I strongly wouldn't recommend it. So what is the secret the Beard Meets Food uses to eat these kinds of foods and stay in such good shape? Oh, four hours, it's a new one. I'm his biggest fan. What the hell's going on? Hit a little like before, you know, you gotta hit a little like, even before. That's what I like about Adam. He tells a story. Sometimes you don't see a bit of food for three minutes. I wanted to do this at like 11 a.m. ish. Likeable character, isn't he? Sometimes you gotta fast forward a bit. Show me the money. Show me the pancake. Show me the pancake. I don't know what the pizza cut is about. You're hungry. Another thing, you ever thought, now his beard meets food, he can't get rid of the beard. If he has a U-turn and doesn't want the beard anymore, he can't, because then he's just meets food. Whoa. What? Hold on. I've never seen him fail before. Do you know what? They say never meet your heroes. Ever heard that? He's done, he's done half a million views in four. He's made thousands. Of, he didn't. What's the point? Don't have role models. Don't aspire to be like anyone because I'm sat in a McDonald's car park at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning doing a video about beard meets food. Should change his channel to beard can't finish food. I could have done them pancakes. Easy. Easy. Would have done that. I would have eaten the plate. Fortunately for me, I found a video online that Adam made explaining exactly how he manages to eat these huge amounts of food and remain in shape. The single most important factor, and I can't stress this enough, when it comes to gaining weight or losing weight, is the amount of calories you consume over time. You can only gain weight if you eat too much chronically and consistently, and likewise, you can only lose weight if you eat too little chronically and consistently. If I was to make an educated guess, I would say you're not a professional eater. So I'm going to explain to you how you can use those principles to help yourself when it comes to losing fat. There's an incredibly clever tactic that Adam uses when it comes to staying in shape. He's worked out how many calories roughly he needs on a daily basis. And that is 3000 calories. Now, maybe if you're smaller and not quite as active, it might be less. However, if you're bigger and you might move more, it could be more. I will put a calculator in the description. Help yourself to that. Maybe do it at the end of the video. Once you've got this amount, your best tactic is to times that by seven. Because once you times that by seven, you're much better working off to a weekly amount of calories that you're gonna aim for, because not all of our days are the same. We have this period of the week where things go crazy and it's called the weekend. So with Adam understanding his weekly amount of calories, should he do a food challenge on the first day of the week, he can just deduct it from his weekly amount of calories. And in the video he says, instead of having 3,000, he just goes down to 2,000 calories for the rest of the week, which actually for any of the mathematicians watching, is 1,000 less calories than he would normally have. Because that is only 20,000 calories. He would actually be in a deficit. But you're not doing food challenges. You're not there conquering YouTube, trying to eat the biggest burger in the shortest period of time. So you're probably wondering how this lesson can apply to you. And I'll tell you, there are two types of people in the world. Those who let their weekends mess up their progress and psychopaths. If you're not someone that goes a bit crazy at the weekend, you remember at school when someone was crazy, What you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to the link in the description. At the end of the video, you're gonna work out the rough amount of calories you need for the day. Let's guess it's 2,500. Times that by seven. Now my pedigree chum, this is all I want you to do. I want you to track your calories for a week, maybe two weeks. But you're gonna start on a Friday. And all I want you to do is be honest. Friday, a couple of beers off to work with the boys, maybe stuff in a Mexican burrito on the taxi home to your missus, hiccuping in the car. Oh, babe, I barely even oh, drunk that much. Saturday, tried to do some intermittent fasting, held off till lunch, had a pretty healthy lunch, but then in the evening, you saw pizza, had a few too many, but had it with a Coke Zero, not too much damage. Sunday, gone to see your parents-in-law, they cooked a roast dinner, you didn't want to be rude when your future mother-in-law said to you, do you want another serving of that? I'm not here saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying let's see what kind of damage the weekend did. 10,400 calories for the weekend. If we deduct that from 17,500, that only leaves you 7,100 calories for the remainder of the week. That means that if you wanted to successfully lose fat, you would need to go down to 1,775 calories for the remaining days of the weekend. The problem with this is a lot of people in the office are gonna say to you, that's not enough calories. But it is. And the reason you're eating such a small amount of calories is because the damage you did at the weekend. The issue that we see in people is, they're doing the damage at the weekend and they're not making up for it during the week, which is why they are fat, gaining fat, or struggling to lose weight. 
You can't have your cake and eat it and everything else, you podgy bastard, and get away with it throughout the week. You must balance the books like Adam does if you want to successfully lose fat. Now, if you don't want to eat poverty calories during the week, then you must make changes to your weekend. You must rein it in, drink less, work on portion control, push your meals back to later in the day. Whatever method you want to utilize, it's up to you. But although I look like a math teacher, I'm here giving you the knowledge that the reason Adam is in such good shape for the profession he does is because he calculates and methodically moves around calories throughout the week to make it work for him. And you need to do the same too.